So in this video we're going to talk a bit about wavelengths and electromagnetic spectrum. The reason why is because the dot point itself says identify, so that means name, name the limited range of wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum detected by humans and compare this with, the, with those of other vertebrates and invertebrates. So before we start, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what an electromagnetic spectrum is and what these wavelengths are. So the electromagnetic spectrum it's just a spectrum, it's just a range, so that's basically what a, a spectrum is. An electromagnetic spectrum is all the whole range of different types of electromagnetic waves we can find. Uh, so these you can see here, these would be long waves, these would be short waves, and right here is our visible light. These waves are our visible light. Now I quickly want to again also go over what electromagnetic waves are. So electromagnetic waves are waves which have an electromagnetic field, so electrical field and a magnetic field, and those two fields join up to make sure that, that this actual wave can do some couple of things, a couple of unique things. So these waves, because of the electromagnetic nature, okay, um, can travel at the speed of light, so all travel at the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, and they can also travel in the vacuum, which means they don't need to have air to travel in, they can travel through space. And most of them are produced by the sun. Right? So these are some of the features of electromagnetic waves. You don't need to remember this, but I'm just mentioning all this. And it also says you need to know about the wavelengths. So what is a wavelength? So if this, for example, were one wave, this was one electromagnetic wave, and this is another electromagnetic wave, the wavelength would be the highest point of wave one and the highest point of wave two. The distance between those highest points is what we consider the wavelength. And the reason why that's important is because this electromagnetic spectrum shows us the different types of wavelengths. So it's ordered by the wavelengths. So the radio waves, for example, can be, have the longest wavelengths, whereas the gamma rays have the shortest wavelengths. And there's lots of stuff in between. Right? I mean, most of these we would have heard before. Radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma ray. So most of these should be somewhat familiar, at least in terms of the words and the names of them, right? But the thing we're going to focus on is the visible spectrum. So that would be right here. And I've got a picture of it right here as well. So in terms of the wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum, um, it's roughly from 700 nanometers to 380 nanometers. So red, the color red of that spectrum has a wavelength of 700 nanometers. So you can imagine if there's one wave here, and then there's another wave here. The distance between these two waves is 700 nanometers in red. So the color red has 700 nanometers difference. Whereas if we go on the other spectrum, so this is the one side, this is the red part here. Whereas the blue side has about 380. So that would mean that the actual wavelengths are a lot closer together in blue light. That's what that means. So that in this case, this is between this point and this point are about 380 nanometers. And when it comes to the, sh the shorter the wavelength, so the, the more can be packed in a small space. So as you can see, in this case, we've got two wavelengths here. We might have the same space. We might have three wavelengths or even more. So the more wavelengths, the higher the energy. So that means the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy because we can pack more waves into the actual same space so that we've got more energy. And that's why, for example, UV light can damage our eyes because UV light has more energy than the, the visible light spectrum. UV light is here, ultraviolet, and this can damage our eyes because of the high energy it possesses compared to visible light. But for, for the purpose of this actual video, I want to quickly go over the types of colors that humans can see. So this is our visible light spectrum. Uh, this is a visible light spectrum that we can see, generally about 700 nanometers to 380 nanometers. And that comprises of these colors. So you might want to remember this kind of way of remembering these colors. Roy, G, Iv. Roy stands for red. O, so R for red, O for orange, yellow, for, uh, Y for yellow, G for green, B for blue, I for uh, indigo, and V for violet. Uh, so these are all the colors that we can kind of see. But we actually ha only have three cones. So we have photoreceptors. These are our photoreceptors that allow us to see color vision, these cones. But we only have three of them. We have red, green, and blue. 
but if we combine if we combine these three colors we, we get to see all the other colors right so we can see all these seven colors mentioned beforehand and different shades of these colors because by combining different these different cones we get all the different colors that's basically what you should know just not much about the electromagnetic spectrum just kind of what it is and, and what the visible light spectrum what wavelengths they have roughly 700 to 380 nanometers and then you should we're going to talk about on either side of these two because we can only see visible light but some other animals can see other wavelengths and one last thing before i move to the next slide one millimeter equals to one million nanometers so if we have a wavelength of let's say 700 nanometers such as red that's a tiny wavelength right that's that's very small compared to radio which is 10 to the power of three that would be 1000 in this case it's in meters at so 1000 meters so radio waves have 1000 meter wavelengths whereas our visible light spectrum is only 700 nanometers so it's tiny so overall the visible light spectrum has a tiny proportion of the whole spectrum so most of the actual spectrum most of the whole range of different wavelengths is other wavelengths so radio microwave or or, or x-ray gamma ray the visible light only takes up a small portion of it right even smaller than this here just a tiny portion all right so because we have to identify a limited range of wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum detected by humans we've already done that right right humans we have about 380 nanometers to 700 nanometers that was roughly our wavelength that we can see but we need to compare that to different vertebrates and invertebrates so i'll quickly go again over this here this term trichromatic vision tri means three chromatic means color chromatic so in this case we have green red and blue rods so this is, these are the things that give us the color but if you can see if we join them up even though we only have red, green, and blue, we can see yellow, violet, and all the other colors. So that's how we can see different colors, because we have these three cones that give us this, these visions. But other animals have other actual cones. So if we compare the bee, for example, the bee will not be able to see too well in red, right? So bee have, don't have very good red vision. The red vision isn't too good, but instead of having really good red vision, they have ultraviolet so they have ultraviolet receptors plus some of the other ones so bees you can see this is the spectrum of the bees so the spectrum of the bees is about 300 nanometers to 600 nanometers so overall that's 300 nanometer that range so the, in between they can see about 300 nanometer worth of wavelength that's very similar to humans but it's just what kind of wavelengths they can see is different, right? So we, so we can see these ones here, so more in the red spectrum, whereas the actual bees can see more in the ultraviolet spectrum. Bees, butterflies, most insects, birds, and some reptiles, these are examples of, of actual um, vertebrates and invertebrates that can have UV vision. Yeah, so UV vision is what they have. And the birds are a good example because birds actually have of what we call tetrachromatic vision. So tetra means four, tetrachromatic. So they might have exactly the same cones as we have, but on top of that, they have a UV vision receptor. So they have a receptor for UV and these three. So they have really good vision. They have our vision plus UV vision. So a bird would have a bigger range then bees, they would have similar to us, and UV vision, because they have really good vision. vision. Um, some reptiles, like geckos, for example, can also see, we believe geckos can see ultraviolet light. And when you look at this picture, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like for us. This is for sort of human vision, if you look at an actual flower. And this is what an actual bee would see. And we're going to go over why B sees this and what's, why it's important for the B as well. So B has a different view because of the ultraviolet receptor. Now, the infrared vision, that's pit, pit viper snake. And the pit viper snake looks like this is a pit viper snake. Pit viper snake and some fire beetles um, have infrared vision. So in this case, we have our visible light and anything beyond red so anything above the, the wavelength of red which about 700 nanometers is infrared so these pit vipers 
can have a range that is, in many cases they have color vision, so they might have 400 to 700 plus, right? That plus is important because they see beyond what we see because they also see infrared, which is what infrared actually is. If you have any warmth, so warmth, body heat, body heat produces infrared irradiation, right? So body heat, body heat produces infrared radiation. So anything that produces body heat will produce these infrared um, radiation. So you can see this dog here, for example, it's producing body heat. And if you have infrared vision, you can see the heat actually coming out of the animal. Now we're going to talk about in the next video why that might be useful, both for a pit viper snake and for the fire beetles. But these are two examples of animals, vertebrates and invertebrates that have infrared vision. And you should know just the spectrum in this case is higher than 700 because they have infrared vision. So I'll quickly go over dot point again. Identifies, that means name, name a limited range of wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum detected by humans and compare this range with those of other vertebrates and invertebrates. And so humans have about 380 to 700 nanometers. That's your visible light spectrum. So we can only see visible light. Whereas some bees, butterflies, birds, for example, have UV vision. So what that means is their actual, um, they have, they start lower, they can see ultraviolet, so violet is here, they can see ultraviolet, which is right here, which we can't see, so that's about 300 nanometers. So most of these have about 300 to 600 nanometers in terms of the range of vision. Um, with the exception of birds, birds have really good vision, so they have about 300 to 700, so they can see ultraviolet, but they can also see still red as well, like we can, right? so they have really good vision. That's UV vision. And then infrared, that's when you have animals that can see um, beyond red in the infrared category. And those would be the pit viper snake and some fire beetles. So infrared beyond the red means they have a higher wavelength of 700 nanometers. They can see more than 700 nanometers in terms of the wavelength because that's infrared, right? So that would be infrared here. This would be next to it would be visible light, the small part here. And then after it, comes infrared and they can see portions of that infrared spectrum. I hope that was useful.